Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel where the star of the show in this video is not this gorgeous 286 personal computer, it's not the Model M keyboard from IBM, it's not even this genius mouse that I have on display here, but it's another product from Genius, namely this Genie Scan here. In this video, I want to give you a quick overview of the scanner, the software that came with it, show you the software in action, including all the fun stuff you can do with it, and its OCR capabilities. The Genie Scan 4000 is a hand scanner that was very popular in the end of the 80s, early 90s, both for PC devices, but also for Amiga and Atari, where it was heavily advertised. Now you have to imagine the time period here where a desktop flatbed scanner would easily cost you over $1,500 to $2,000. So this hand scanner was a good alternative for that as it had a much cheaper price point. So I found the hand scanner in a big box of mice and other input devices that I picked up recently. And it immediately brought me back to my childhood as when I had my Amiga 500, I'm pretty sure I also had a hand scanner just like this. So it brought back a lot of memories. The scanner itself is really recognizable. So you would hold on this scan button here and then just drag it onto a page in order to scan something. On the back, we can see that this is a GenieScan GS4000, which is a grayscale hand scanner, so it doesn't do any color. And it basically just rolls over the paper here. It lights up some LEDs, and then there's an internal optic sensor that just reads whatever you are scanning and converts it into a digital format. On the left-hand side, we have the scan start button, and then we have a couple of switches here for the various levels of detail for photographs and for text. On the back, we can change the scanning resolution in DPI or dots per inch, and there's also this thumb wheel in order to control the brightness of the scan. Now the Genie Scan uses this proprietary PS2-like connector. So in order to hook it up to your computer, you need a special expansion card, which is this one. This allows you to hook up the Genie Scan onto your computer and only requires an 8-bit ISA slot. On the card itself, there's really not that much to see. We have the special PS2-like connector here, which has 8 pins and the card also has some jumpers where we can select the address bank, IRQ and DMA channel. So let's take our genius expansion card here and put it in a free ISA slot on this 286 that I'll be using to test the features of the genius scanner. Now before we can use the Genius software, we need to install a mouse. So I'm going to be using my Genius mouse here and I'm going to be inserting it in this 25 pin serial port on my computer, which is COM2. And then I'll hook up the Genius scanner in the Genius expansion card that I just added to the PC. The scanner came with a piece of software called Dr. Genius, where we have very good scanner integration where we just hit the scan button our scanner is ready to go and upon hitting the scan button we can slide the scanner across a piece of paper and it will immediately import it into dr genius another tool which is provided by genius is scan edit which is a black and white graphical program and again excellent scanner integration we hit scan the scanner initializes itself and all we need to do is position the scanner on a piece of paper, hold the scan button and just scan whatever it is we want to scan. And it will be imported into scan edit where you can further edit your graphics here. So the PC that I'll be using here is a 286 with one megabytes of RAM. Now in theory, this should also work on an XT based computer with 640 kilobytes of RAM. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to launch the application on my IBM PC, so I went with this 286 instead. So let's go into the Genius application folder, load up a mouse driver, and start the first application, which is Scan Edit. Now, this piece of software is a black and white graphical application running on MS DOS, 
and it has excellent scanner integration so you hit the scan button and then start scanning in this case I'm scanning a little toy car and what you might notice is that the car is made up of only two colors black and white there are no shades of gray to be found anywhere now normally you wouldn't use this type of setting which is called two-tone on photographs like this now for pictures like this where you want to see shades of gray the Genie Scan has a photo mode or halftone mode. Now there are different types of photo mode here, so let me use the more coarse grained option first. Now with this setting there isn't really much detail. It does distinguish between the various shades of gray, but it is a very poor quality. We can up the quality by manipulating this switch here. And now you can see there's a little bit more detail. It's not that coarse grained of a picture anymore and with the final setting although the fact that we are still using 100 dpi so the image will remain relatively small we can see a lot of more details emerging in the picture now if we want to make the image bigger we need to increase the resolution and this is done using this dpi switch here so let's move it up to 200 dpi You'll immediately notice a big difference as the scanned image becomes a lot bigger and automatically a lot more detail emerges. So let's try 300 dpi, which will result obviously in again a bigger picture. And this particular scanner goes all the way to 400 dpi, which will result in a very large picture. But this 400 dpi and even 300 dpi was more of a marketing trick because it produces very large files with lots of processing overhead and a lot of printers weren't even capable of printing in this resolution. Now just to emphasize the difference between two-tone and half-tone, I have this picture here that I have scanned using the text mode or two-tone mode. And as you can see, the scanner doesn't do any effort to render shades of gray. It's just basically black and white and it will try to distinguish between black and white, obviously, but there are no, there's no middle way, there's no gray tones anywhere in this picture. Now in photo mode or halftone mode, we get a picture like this. And if we zoom into the same section here where we obviously see a shade of gray on the wheel here, when we zoom in, we can actually see that the scanner is only using black and white, but it's the spacing between the individual pixels here that will determine whether something is perceived as either black, white, or a shade of gray. Now an issue you could sometimes encounter while scanning was this phenomenon, where as you're scanning a page, it starts to look a little bit smeared. And that's because of the brightness control of the scanner, which is picking up some noise from the other pages. So manipulating the thumb wheel will uh, enable you to get these clean images like this one. Now sometimes, because this scanner is only 105 millimeters of width sometimes you need to scan an image twice in order to get the full picture and the scan edit software will help you to stitch the two images together as you can do another overlap scan here which will allow you to do a second pass of the image and then using the scan edit software you will be able to merge the two pictures together in order to create one big image so here you simply need to position the second image next to the first image, confirm with a left mouse click, and you will have one big image that you can then again tidy up a little bit in the scan edit software. But let's go back to the main board that we just scanned. So scan edit has very basic file saving and retrieval functionality. It does, however, support various file formats. But let's load up the main board and let's do some basic editing. For example, let's erase these lines that we have here because we will be changing the layout of our main board quite a bit here. So let's go ahead and remove these boundaries. And then we will be moving a section of the main board to the right. And we can not only move, but we can also copy stuff. So let's add three additional ISO slots to our main board. 
We can also use the zoom function to zoom in on a very specific area in the picture. If we want to do some very detailed uh, cleanup of some noise that we have here, for example, these black pixels that we have here, we can use the zoom function to go ahead and remove those. And let's go ahead and copy these two chips here, move them to the right. Now let's start with a vertical mirror where we will be able to select a portion of the image and mirror it vertically. We can also do the same in a horizontal way, like so. Let's move one chip back here. Now because there is no layering here, we need to go in and remove the little circle that is now being overlapped by the other chip. So we'll use the zoom function and then we can uh, do some rework here on a pixel level to remove the circle that we had. So looks a lot better. And let's go ahead and add some RAM sockets here. So we'll go ahead and duplicate that, some additional control chips, and then we can add our lines back again. So we'll create these really nice straight lines onto our scanned image and our new main board is complete. Let's add a little text here on the silk screen. And now I come to the conclusion that I moved the text too far to the right. And because this is all single layer, although I am able to move the text that I had just created here, I will actually move all of the graphical elements which are in my selection. So even the little line, the vertical line on the right is now also moved and it has become part of the R. I also don't have the option to change the existing text anymore. So if I want to add an 8 here, I just have to add another piece of text, which will immediately be part of the single layer image. And finally, I need to touch up the letter R here so that I can remove the little vertical line that was copied along with the piece of text. And as I already mentioned, the Genie Scan also comes with Dr. Genius, which is also a graphical program running on MS DOS, but this supports color graphics as well. So it has the same excellent scanning support as ScanEdit does. So immediately from Dr. Genius, you can scan images and put them onto the canvas, as I'm doing right here. It also supports window scans, uh, most of the functionality, which is also in scan edit. And here you can go completely wild with all kinds of colors, text, graphics. Um, so in the color and graphics department, it offers a bit more than scan edit. So I think the goal is that you would scan your images and scan edit, do your processing there, and then finish things off here in Dr. Genius. Now, another big use case, or should I say promise for these hand scanners was OCR or optical character recognition. Now, in today's world using uh, smartphones, it's very easy to take a picture of a piece of text and export it into a word processor like Microsoft Word, which will automatically convert the image and allow you to edit the text immediately. So it has done OCR basically on the fly. Now, this Genie Scan hand scanner also supports OCR, but it looks a little bit different. So, it has a dedicated application to do optical character recognition from Prodigy, and it has a bunch of options here that you can set. We can define how the characters look on our piece of text, whether it's fixed pitch, proportional, we can set the character spacing, we can automatically detect the spacing, or we can specify spacing ourselves. So let's start an OCR scan here and see what happens. So let's scan in a piece of text from the scan edit manual. So you might think now that you will get a nice piece of editable text, but instead you get this. 
So this is part of the learning aspect of the OCR application, which is provided here, where you need to basically learn the scanner to interpret the text. So as you can see, it doesn't really have detected all of the characters in the right way. So a lot of characters are misinterpreted. The probability of a correct character is usually pretty low on a first pass. So you need to continuously learn the application, these new texts. So let's up the resolution a little bit so that we can make it a little bit easier for the scanner, hopefully, but no, not the case. So again, we need to learn it. We need to look at each individual character, correct it if necessary, so that we can increase the, the probability of the scanner making the correct choice. And after a while, this does seem to work a little bit. And I need to emphasize a little bit here because even in 1991, 1992, people were still complaining about the fact that this OCR stuff simply didn't work on these types of handheld scanners. Sure, you could configure lots of stuff in the software like the character spacing, the sensitivity of the scanner, the font that should be used to interpret the text, but it was overall a very difficult process. Although after some learning and um, spending some time with it, I was able to get it to scan some lines of text with about 70 to 80 percent accuracy, I think. For example, here, yeah, it's not that bad. It has missed a couple of letters, but that's because I actually spend a lot of time learning the scanner, this particular line of text. Because as you can see, as we move along, the second sentence from the text isn't all that great. Now, granted, it's a lot better than the first pass that we did, but ultimately not very usable. So I really hope you've enjoyed this little video on the Genius GS4000 hand scanner. If you're into retro stuff and retro computers, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as I have lots of more cool content coming. If you like this video, you can always give it a thumbs up and write a comment in the comment section below. And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye bye.